Okay, my friends, I prayed again last night. Lord, please show me what's going to happen for the tribulation, what's going to happen in time wars in the United States. And this is what I had. The dream starts off and the Holy Spirit reviewing how after I got out of the Marines, I kept a lot of my Marine Corps gear. And the Holy Spirit said, you did this because you knew, I'm subconsciously, apparently in the spirit, something, but my conscious mind, I don't think was thinking this way. So because you knew there would be another war, and another war did come after 9-11. I joined the Army National Guard because the Holy Spirit told me to. And I went to war, Operation Iraqi Freedom. And I was there, March 03 to March 04. But then the Holy Spirit says, but after that war, you didn't keep anything because you knew you wouldn't fight again. I'm telling you that consciously I didn't know that. But the Holy Spirit said, like, that's why you did that. Your spirit knew. This is so interesting, and it's something I absolutely believe and I have experienced before, is that our spirit knows things and the conscious mind doesn't know them. And you do some things because of what your spirit knows, even though consciously you're unaware of why you do them. And I'm sure every psychologist will agree with that, the subconscious motivation of things. But in this case, it's that the spirit knows. It's not the subconscious the way modern psychology defines it, but our spirit man. In within this dream... I wake from a dream, and I've been told in this dream that I must finish my degree, which means a PhD. Because after the war, as soon as this next war ends, I need to immediately begin to use that degree. So I don't have time after the war to go to school. I need to go into professional work utilizing this PhD. So in the dream, I know that. Now what happens is I'm in this kind of a large compound. I return from somewhere... And there's a large compound. There are, there are homes there. I don't know if it's completely walled in, but I, I think maybe it was. And this is the compound belongs to my father. So in a dream, my father means God Almighty. Wicked men rose up during this war. So this is a scene in the United States. So this is a man, not me, but I experience everything through the eyes of that man. And what happens is this guy returns to a compound. There's a very bad guy. This guy has killed other people. And he, re and he walks into this camp, and he says he's looking for a dog. And they find the dog, and they give it to him. He claims it's his dog, although I think I found the dog or someone else found the dog and nursed it back to health and raised it. And now this guy is here, and he's saying, it's my dog. It's my Oh, you know, this is very interesting. I'm realizing that God's paralleling that with another experience that I had, uh, which is going to be in my second book of 100 Ways God Speaks to You. And that one's called Three Dreams and a Mugging, that short story. But it takes place in Philadelphia. In, and the way that one starts out, this guy who's really planning to mug me, he's really planning evil against me, comes up and says that he thinks that my dog is his dog. And that's what happens in this dream right here. The, the, the Philadelphia thing is a true event. It really happened. But sticking to this message, the guy comes in, he says, this is my dog. Starts threatening us. And we know this guy. His, his reputation precedes him because he's killed two, maybe three other people recently and not in on the battlefield but just in conflicts so he's a bad guy and now he he's threatening to fight here even though we outnumber him everyone that's there like we kind of form a circle around this intersection and he's at one edge and he's attack us and now or to return to his people and come back with a militia and attack us his group of people so it's more like a gang but it's really a militia at this point and i say listen you want to fight? I'll give you a fight. I'll fight you. But here are the rules. It's going to be one-on-one, -on -one, and before we start the fight, you got to tie up the dog. I don't want the dog to get involved somehow. So, now again, it's not me. It's somebody, and I'm experiencing it through this guy's eyes. Like, I am him. Like, I'm experiencing the full thing. This guy puts a pocket knife in his left hand with the blade sticking out, so I do the same. Uh, his blade is bigger than mine, but uh, I'm not worried about that. Now, when this guy says he's going to bring back these guys, I realize, like, it's better to just kill this guy now. Like, I believe that I can defeat him, and I also know that someone has to. So I say, all right, here's the deal. We'll fight one-on-one -on -one to the death. I, I, I don't think I've ever had this experience before. No, I've had fights to the death before in dreams, for sure. But to just challenge someone to fight to the death, I've never experienced that. And let me tell you, it was a brutal fight. The guy never manages to stab me, but I stab him a couple times. Then I get his back. I get the rear naked hold with my right arm. I'm holding his left because he still has his blade so that he can't strike me. He's bleeding, so that's all I need because I know that eventually he'll bleed out. He'll tire. 
So I'm holding him. I've got his hand behind his back. I, I managed to make him drop his knife. And now I'm walking him because I, I want, I just know that this exercise is going to make him bleed out. So I'm killing this guy. He's, again, it's a really bad guy. And again, it's not me. So, but this is the fight. And, and my waking body in my bed, I don't know this yet, is breathing really, really hard because it's a rigorous fight. And my body in my bed as I'm sleeping is reacting. And my mouth was closed, so I'm breathing through my nose just really loudly. And I start walking this guy, and then I cover his nose and mouth. And again, this is a, a parallel to another dream. This is so interesting. I, twice in one dream, there's this parallel back to another dream. And the other dream, uh, I've posted it here on, on YouTube and other platforms, BitChute as well, uh, Rumble. And I said, and, and the, that, that dream is called uh, Stop Wrestling Demons and Cast Them Out. And when I, in that dream, it's again, it's a long fight against this gator, a crocodile, and it represents um, some kind of sin, some kind of demonic presence in life. And in that one as well, I tried to cover off his breathing to snuff him out. And that's what I did here. And then I woke up. When I wake up, my right knee hurt so incredibly bad. And let me tell you, uh, the devil's tried to kill me many times. I've had... Oof, 15, I think 15 broken bones by the time I was 13. And I've broken bones in the Marines and elsewhere. It felt broken. I'm telling you, the pain was incredible. But, you know, there's a spiritual warfare. I learned this early on in dreams. This is absolutely true. God has one plan for your life. The devil has another plan. And in a dream, you can experience them as like a story that's floating. And you need to grab onto God's story and manifest that truth and not fall into what the devil wants to do to you. So you have to wrestle with it. So I began to say, no, the knee is fine. There's no problem. I couldn't move the leg. It hurts so bad. Like if I tried to move it, the pain increased so much that I stopped doing that. So I said, I am going to move this knee. It's going to work. The knee is perfect. I was saying everything. And even when I came and sat down to write out the dream, I moved my knee and it wobbled around. I and mean, I still kept saying, no, I'm healed in the name of Jesus. The knee is good. Like there was a real a real spiritual assault against my physical body to break that knee. But I didn't receive it. It was a curse. So curses are like stories that are written and you have to resist them. I think that's just an important message uh, to issue at any time. So in the middle of this, there you go. God bless you. So I hope that that will help you uh, destroy some works of the enemy against your life. So I didn't receive that story and uh, my knee is perfectly fine right now. I'm just moving it around. You can't see, but it's good to go. I killed that guy, right? Or I was about to before I woke up. So then I went back to sleep. And in this dream, I am warned that greater war is coming. So now this is the third reference back to another dream. Because I had another dream some months ago that something happens and some guy who wants war to the, the war to expand comes running. And there's been some kind of an agreement between two nations. And this now means for sure that there's going to be greater war. And I think in that dream, one of the nations was France. Like France had made a commitment or an agreement or made a statement, a declaration. And now there's going to be greater war. This guy's got a newspaper. It's published in the news. But God's showing me that before this happens, that he's going to send me money. I'll receive two payments at least. And that's going to be enough money to help me relocate, to move. And that's not the first dream I've had that um, I would be forced to move from here where I am now in Sweden. I drive this big truck somehow. I don't know what it is. So it's some, some later time I have this big truck. And there's a war going on. And this is some huge military establishment, a camp maybe. There's a lot of grass here. It could be like a golf course maybe. It's like low rolling hills, but everything has like perfect green grass. No dandelions mixed in there, nothing. So it's kind of like a, a grass parade deck or a, um, a ceremonial deck where on a military base you'll have a big thing, except it's not flat like you would expect. It's It has rolling hills. And I work inside this building that's kind of in the middle. It feels like it's even elevated a bit. The guy I work for is some kind of a doctor. He's medical something. So again, this might be about, you know, go get a PhD in biology or a master's degree in biology, get this degree, finish it. And so I'm working for this guy and I realize like that, that it's a real blessing that I'm working here because I don't have to fight and I have much better living conditions than other people. And this guy's my friend and I tell him, I said, listen, I had a dream that this war is going to expand. So I'm already into the expanded war at this point because I've been conscripted, which is 
something I've dreamed many, many conscriptions. I've talked about that in one of my podcasts. Uh, and I tell him, and also, I, t- I tell him this. I don't know if you can see this since, whoops. Oh, I should have done that from the beginning. That's much nicer to see. And I, I tell him this. See, Owen, the guy looks like uh, Owen Hunt in Grey's Anatomy. He's a veteran of the Middle East Wars, and he comes onto the staff. So he's a, a medical, a military doctor. So this guy is Owen Hunt in the dream. That's what he looks like. And I tell him that. I say, listen, there's going to be more war, and I tell him the blank are dangerous. Don't get them, right? Don't, do not get them. And he rejects both of these, and he tells me, listen, don't tell this to anybody. And then he leaves. There's some men training outside, and one of them is um, a young black man in uniform, and he comes and he knocks on the door, and he asks me a question, like, hey, do you think there's going to be more war? And I tell him, because it's my orders, I say, no, 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 there, don't, don't worry, the war is not going to get worse than this. Uh, but then I step outside, and I tell him in low tones, I say, listen, I have many fulfilled prophetic dreams. This is true even now. And I tell him, and I dream that more war is coming. And don't get this thing right here. Don't, don't get that. They're deadly, I tell him. And this guy, he also rejects my warning. He doesn't want to receive it. But I promise you that this is what's going to happen. It's prophetic warning about these two things. Expanded war. The war is even going to expand. And then from there, it will expand again. And maybe worse and worse. In dreams about the United States being attacked, I've seen that when Russia and China and their initial allies begin to show advances, that other nations start to say, oh, and groups of them, maybe it's the Gulf Cooperation Union or whatever, uh, different economic unions or people with, with collaborations or good treaties, mutual treaties, they start coming in against the United States in groups of three, four, and five different groups. Of, like, it's not like one country at a time, but they come in in groups, groups of them a sign and say, okay, we're making war in the U.S. So I'm telling this guy, the war is going to expand. But there were three dreams. I, I don't think I've ever recognized this before. Three dreams referenced from this one dream. I returned to the main house, and that's why I start thinking about that I'm, I'm really blessed that God has taken care of me. And listen, this is the thing. Rebecca Erlanker, South African prophet, she has said the same, like God showed her. There will be food shortages, but she will have whatever she wants. She will be blessed. And this is what the scripture says. Those who dwell in the sacred place of the Most High will be protected under the wings of God. If you draw near to God, if you love God, go and seek God. You need to know God. You need to pray. This morning we were praying for a young man in Ukraine. And that was the message. Like God told me, pray that he will receive gifts. Gifts of dreams and visions. Gift of, what was it? Uh, word of knowledge. That he will have this gift. God was telling him, like, I have a different plan for you. The enemy's gotten into your head. He shuts you down, that you don't have hope. Your hope is drained. Your light is dimmed. But God has a plan for you. And he told me to tell him, look in the scriptures. There you will find what it means to be a man, a strong man. And a strong man is a man who follows God, who puts God first and walks in the path that God set before him. That's a great man. That's a strong man. That's a true man. Right there. And again, back to this dream, he's showing me, if you seek him out, if you put God first, he's going to take care of you. And I told that young man, and this is absolutely true, the greatest life you possibly could live is a life walking with God. You will not have as many victories, as much joy, happiness, uh, exciting events as you will walking with God. To see the power of God, that is the thing. And men are called. And again, so what I was praying, what was the purpose of this dream where I fight this guy and kill him? I knew I ha- someone had to kill him, and I believed I could beat him. Why? This was a man, a warrior brought up by God. So you see, like, I'm going to work in some kind of a medical thing or something. Well, that's one guy. Maybe it's me. I don't know. I think it is, actually. And that's what I'm called to. But other men will be called to be warriors, men of God. Jephthah was called, Gideon was called, King David was called, Joshua was absolutely called as a leader for war. I've prayed for men before that God would be with them in war. A guy that I knew would become a tank commander. 
a guy that I knew would be high ranking by the time the invasion of the United States came. I've talked about some of these things. There will be men that God calls into war. The most decorated man in all military history. At first, he was a conscientious objector. He said, I don't want to kill men. But his recruiter said, go home. Go home and pray. And he went, he took a week's leave that he was given, and he spoke with his minister at, back in his hometown, and he prayed about it. And after he got God's permission to go forth, he was blessed. Let me tell you, when I, was, when I went back to the war the second time, the beginning of this war, it said I knew I would go to war again. And I did. I went to OYF. And you know what? Before I went, I prayed. I was like, Lord, I want to make sure this is you. And I didn't want to go, in fact. And the Holy Spirit used to put a hand on my back once every day and say, you know what I want you to do. And the burden of refusing to honor the love in that voice, it grew, it grew, it grew until I joined the National Guard. And you know what? Our unit was so blessed. We prayed together, all of us. Our unit was so blessed that a general came down to our office. He said, in 30 years in this specialty, I've never seen so much success like you guys are having. Not Marines, not, not Army, not Navy, not Air Force. No other group that does this job has performed so well. Like, what is your secret? And I was there when he said that. And I said, it's that we pray together. That's what I said. And you know what? There was a big deal like who would publish these, I don't even remember what it's called, some super high level report. And you know who had the most of them? Me. I had more than double the number of reports as the next guy. And I wasn't even a professional in this. I wasn't even trained in this specialty. But God put me in there. God can do anything he wants. The army rules don't limit him. And again, I worked in an office. Well, I had air conditioning for most of the time, not, not the first three months. I did a different job that were, involved a lot of sweating. But God took care of me. God took care of me. And he blessed all the work that I did because I was there in obedience to him. So whatever you do, be sure that is where God leads you. God has people and he, is, and he gives assignments and missions. Whatever you receive, do that. This is the man from Modesto reminding you as always to pray or be defeated.